Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us, for being a part of our little tiny table here out in the middle of the jungle. And we are the family that believes based upon scriptures that the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is the course for life, is the guidelines for life, is what we should be following. They are not something that has been thrown away. It's not something that's been abolished. It's not something that our Messiah came and decided we don't have to live in Kodesha. We don't have to live in holiness. We can just live as we want to live. And uh, you can do what you want to do, and you'll just have this little rapture. The rapture is going to come and get all these disobedient people. And the disobedient people are going to be taken up to uh, a place where disobedient people go and hang out and uh, enjoy their disobedient ways. But all of that is completely, absolutely contrary to what Scripture says. In fact, Matthew 7 says that people who are disobedient, the Torahless, are going to be told to get gone. Get out of here. Depart from me. You guys are Torahless. You do not keep my Father's laws. There's no place for you in the kingdom. There's no place for people in the kingdom who are Torah breakers. There's no place in the kingdom for those who are not seeking the ways of Yah. If we are not... Yah's people, then by default, we are the devil's people. And um, so these are, these are what we believe, and this is what we hope that uh, we try to get others to start considering, is that their soul is worth absolutely everything. And uh, we have 120 years, a lot less nowadays than we used to have, um, to get this right with our creator, and that is the game. Gentlemen, how you guys doing? Good, good. Everyone good? good. Anyone have any jokes? You guys want to hear a construction joke? Sure. Sorry, I'm still working on it. All right, anything else? <laughs> Eli, what's your electricity joke? My friend explained electricity to me. I was like, what? What? <laughs> All right, so there we are, everyone. Um, we, we're just giving you guys dad jokes. How do you know when something becomes a dad joke? Uh, it becomes a parent. Uh. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Waka, waka, waka. All right, here we go. Guys, this is Josh Scriptures. You guys, this is $64. This book is absolutely huge. You will want to get these before you cannot get these anymore. I'm telling you, once people start seeing these scriptures, they are going to be coming for them in mass. This is 103 books, completely restored names. As we are finishing the front cover now, because these are heading from India they're being printed up, and uh, we're finishing the front cover, and the front cover is amazing. And um, it's like the little soft leather stuff. It's not real leather, but it's like soft leather. Um, it's fake leather, I guess, or what it is. It's called PU stuff. Um, and it is, it is really amazing. This book is very, very amazing. They will be uh, to the States late February, early March. Guys, this is to help prisoners out. This entire ministry that we are doing right here, the reason that we are printing books is because of prisoners and we want to get a prison ministry rolling to where we are able to give one free book for every book that is purchased and we are able to do that and hopefully if anybody wants to help and grab scriptures for you and your families this is the time to do them if you guys are looking for a way to help the prisoners any donations that come in through yahscriptures.com goes immediately and we had a beautiful wonderful sis last week uh, she threw in, I think, $65. That will actually purchase two Bibles. This will purchase two Bibles. We will be able to get, the second we get these scriptures in, she will send in two scriptures into the prisons. And I already have those two names. I have the people that are already ready for those, that are dying for them, that would love these. And um, they're running their own prison ministry inside the prison, which is um, it's simply amazing. And for anybody who wants to download these and take a look at the odd scriptures, the PDF, the same version as the scriptures, is absolutely free. We are the only book manufacturer, the book people that are out there that give this away for free. It's always there for free. And so with that, let us get into our um, daily reading. Anyone give me a quick recap of where we where we are at in Judges. So it starts after Joshua dies. Uh, Judah takes over. Then we're going to go to land. They talk to Simeon, all the other tribes. Like, we'll get you guys to go with us. We'll go with you and conquer your lands. Well, they don't end up all conquering all lands and going into sin. Main covenant of the people. Some of them don't get their land. 
um, every couple, every couple of forty years or so, we get a, someone leads them, brings them out of captivity. So they keep being oppressed, and then we had Othniel, he did his. We had um, Ehud, then we had Deborah, and every time one of these leaders die, they go right back into sin, and uh, they uh, just can't stop when they don't have someone to lead them. Yeah, and um, well, it's the same thing that we do today in this world, right? We are. Uh, we've neglected the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Our Creator says, if you will obey my laws, statutes, and commands, I will be your Elohim. You will be my people. That's the promise. That's the gift. That's the statement that we get. And so it has never changed. It has not changed since the beginning of creation to the end of Revelations, where we see everything up in craziness. It doesn't change. It's always the exact same. All right, here we go. Chapter 6. And the children of Yisrael did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah gave them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian was strong against Yisrael and before the faces of the Midianites. The children of Yisrael made for themselves the refugees, which are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. And it came to be whenever Yisrael had sown that Midian would come up and Amalek and the people of the east would come up against them and encamp against them and destroy the increase of the land as far as Aza and leave no food in Yisrael, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they came up with their livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts, and they and their camels were without number, and they came into the land to destroy it. Thus, Yisrael was brought very low because of Midian, and the children of Yisrael cried out to Yahuwah. And it came to be when the children of Yisrael cried out to Yahuwah because of Midian, that Yahuwah sent a nabi to the children of Yisrael, who said to them, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael, I have brought you up from Mitzrayim, and I have brought you out of the house of bondage, and I, have, I delivered you out of the hand of the Mitzrites, and out of the hand of all your oppressors, and drove them out before you, and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Do not fear the mighty ones of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, and you have not obeyed my voice. And the messenger of Yahuwah came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Abra, which belonged to Yoash, the abbot of Zerite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress to hide it from the eyes of the Midianites. And the messenger of Yahuwah appeared to him, and said to him, Yahuwah is with you, you mighty brave one. And Gideon said to him, O oh, master, if Yahuwah is with us, why has all this come upon us? And where are all his wonders which our fathers related to us, saying, Did not Yahuwah bring us up from Mitzrayim? But now Yahuwah has left us and given us into the hands of Midian. And Yahuwah turned to him and said, Go in the strength of yours, and you shall save Yisrael from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And he said to him, O oh, Yahuwah, with what do I save Yisrael? See, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And Yahuwah said to him, Because I am with you, you shall smite the Midianites as one man. And he said to him, Please, if I have found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that it is you who are speaking with me. Please do not move away from here until I come to you and bring out my offering and put it before you. And he said, I, will, I shall stay until you return. And Gideon went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from an ephod flour. The meat he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and he brought them out to him under the terebinth tree and presented it. All right, so this is the reason that we actually have a dog named Gideon is because of this, uh, <laughs> this uh, forefather of ours, Gideon, who is um, it, it's different kind of a soldier, right? Um, different kind of a guy. I mean, he's not even a soldier. He's just a dude that's, that's out in the middle of... Uh, a field doing this stuff. Um, what do you guys make of it? What do you guys think? It put the meat in a basket. What, what do you think that's all about? I don't know. Maybe like cook it. Maybe like, like maybe they ate out of a basket or something. It's like a fruit basket. They, uh, full of meat. Maybe they 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 uh, like barbecued it and then stuck it in a basket or something. And gave it to him. Yeah, maybe. Because I don't think you boil meat. If you like put something in like a basket, you get your basket all wet. It wouldn't. It wouldn't yeah, be weird yeah, if you like take it. Like a pot. It says a basket, right? It had to be cooked, I think. The, the meat he put in a basket. Yeah, so I bet it's barbecued. I bet they like rotisseried uh, the uh, the goat or whatever it was. Um, I feel like he's a little bit of lack of faith here. They're like questioning Yah and stuff. Oh, he's a brave man for testing Yah, I guess. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a few people that test Yah, right? And Yah, that's the thing about Yah is he, he, he gets it. He gets we're all humans. There's a, you know, the people that, what is it? Missouri is the show me state. Is that Mrs. Missouri? It's like somebody, it's like, that's, that's the, uh, you know, I, I can't remember which state that is, but there's like a state in the U.S. And they, uh, the, the people are so, uh, they, they just don't believe you unless you show me. I think it's Missouri, it's a show me state. All right. 
Um, let's continue on 20, right? Yeah. And the messenger of Elohim said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on the rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. And the messenger of Yahuwah put forth the end of the, sta of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire went up out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the messenger of Yahuwah went from his sight. And when Gideon saw that he was a messenger of Yahuwah, Gideon said, O oh, Adonai, Yahuwah, for I have seen a messenger of Yahuwah face to face. And Yahuwah said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You do not die. And Gideon built an altar there to Yahuwah and called it Yahuwah Shalom. To this day, it is still an opera of the Abiya Zarites. And the same night it came to be that Yahuwah said to him, Take the young bull of your father and the second bull of seven years old, and you shall throw down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asheroth that is beside it. And you shall build an altar to Yahuwah your Elohim on top of this rock in an orderly way, and shall take the second bull and offer a burnt offering with the wood of the image which you cut down. Now, first and foremost, why does Gideon's dad have an altar to Baal? And why does he have an Asherah bull? Uh, this is why they're in captivity right now. <coughs> because they are <coughs> disobedient. They are doing idol worship. They following into all, all the nations around them are doing, and they do exactly what they do, and they all forget Yahuwah. That's why Gideon doesn't really know. Yeah, but Gideon's Yahuwah. dad has to be like, what, 50 years old, maybe, you think? Probably. 40, somewhere, 50 years old. around there. And it was 40 years prior to that where they were just saved. And so inside of a 40-year generation, they've lost it. They've lost it again, right? They just got saved, and all of a sudden now their Asherah poles are back. They're, they're idols to Baal, right? And that's, you know, Yah has said that over and over and over and over. Yet it seems like there is something about these, um, I don't know, something about these these altars or something about the uh, the Asheroth poles of the people. It's like, like the people that get tattoos. Once they start getting tattoos and they get hooked on tattoos, they can't stop getting tattoos, right? They just, it's the same, the same thing with anything, any addiction like that, right? But they just, for whatever reason, what are you looking at me for, Mr. Cole? Why, 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 come on. Bring it to the table. Come on. Nothing. Well, we, it wasn't anything different. Okay. All right. She was giving me the look. I didn't know if I'd cross the line again. I always cross the lines. And I never know until somebody's scowling at me from across the room. Okay. So I hadn't crossed the line. So let's talk about this deal. Um, what is the addiction of these these um, altars and these Asherah poles and all this stuff? Why can't these people just get rid of it? I don't know. I guess they like sitting down in front of a wood statue they made a couple hours ago. You literally have to go do this. You have to go work really hard. To build an altar and to um, to bring all this stuff up, right? It just it just doesn't happen. It's just right, and then you make it by your hand, and then you're like, "This is now my, what I say." Talk to me, wooden altar. Like, Talk to me. You protect me. You do whatever for me. Yeah, it, uh, it's isn't that crazy? You carve it by your hand. You, you you carve like a little owl or something, right? And it's sitting in front of you, and all of a sudden you're like, "Little owl that I carved, will you please protect me?" And you start worshiping this little owl, and the owl just sits there, and it, it doesn't know any different, right? It's just a piece of wood. All right, here we go. Uh, where are we at? I believe 25. I feel like if the wood had like even life to it, it'd just be really confused to what you're doing. Yeah, what do you, yeah. It's like, what is uh, this, man? and that, that would be something amazing, right? You, you, you carve up a little owl, and it comes to life. I mean, but they don't. They don't come to life. They, they're just, they're dead. I don't think it's 25. Um, let's do 26. And you shall build an altar to Yahuwah, your Elohim, on top of this rock in an orderly way, and shall take the second bowl and offer a burnt offering with the wood and an image, and of the image which you cut down. And Gideon could, took two, 10 men from among his servants and did as Yahuwah had said to him. And it came to be, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, that he did it by night. All right, so uh, what do you think that looked like? Uh, I mean, a bunch uh, of dudes with lanterns. You ten guys running around looking for idols. Well, you don't have flashlights back in the day, right? So you're... Uh, you have, like, lanterns or maybe, like, a torch. Or something lanterns like or torches. And nobody came out to defend their um, idols of uh I guess maybe ball. they're sleeping in here, like, there's going on. Yeah, it would have been crazy. They would have had to go out there with their uh, pitchforks and lanterns as well to try to fight that off. Okay. Um... And the men of the city arose early in the morning and saw the altar of Baal was broken down, and the Asheroth that was beside it had been cut down. And the second bowl was being offered on the altar, which was built. So these guys came out, right? Not only was their stuff cut down, it had been laid up, lined up, and it had a bowl burning on it, right? Or, or what, however they did their, their altars, right? I mean, their, or their sacrifices. That would be an interesting sight to see, right? And they said to each other, Who has done this deed? And when they inquired and asked... They said, Gideon, son of Yoash, has done this deed. 
and the men of the city of Yoash, and the, and the, and the men of the city said to Yoash, bring out your son so that he dies, for he has broken down the altar of Baal, and, beside, and because he has cut down the Asherah that was beside it. Now, this is his dad's, right? This was his dad's stuff that he did. Yep. Right? And so everybody's really upset about um, Yoash's... Uh, it's like uh, Abraham part two. Yeah, they're, they're all upset. Hey, man, this dude just cut down our pole. And what did they do? Go out every morning and worship this thing? And they, they went out to, like, worship their uh, the Asherah pole? And it was, I don't understand, was like, the, the relationship between an Asherah pole and this was after, like, Yah just saved them. They had progress well, in their midst. Well, Asherah is the wife of Nimrod, right? Yeah, and so, but I don't understand, like... And Baal is what Nimrod. What mentality they have, like, they, like, this thing gives them, like, power or something. Or this thing's, like... Their God, how how they come across. There's something mesmerizing about this stuff, or there's something that is um, almost drug attributed to this that these people can't get rid of. This It's like they're slamming idols or something. They can't stop slamming that the 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 uh, freaking drugs of, of death, right? They're they're idols and things. All right, let's continue on. Now I got the look from Mr. Cole from across the room. Okay, <laughs> okay, um, thirty one. Thanks for everybody paying attention. I really appreciate Eli and Cade reading along with me on this too as well. 31. And Yoash said to all who stood against him, You, you, would you plead for Baal? You, would you save him? Let the one who would plead for him be put to death by morning. If he is a mighty one, let him plead for himself because his altar has been broken down. This is so confusing. This is the dad of the idol owner. They're coming to, to kill his kid. And then he goes, Hey, you know, if let let Ball let him go uh, deal with this guy, right? Why, why are we dealing with him? Very. He's, he, he's cooler than Terok, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's from the fire, boys. <laughs> um, let's see. Are we in thirty-two, Jade? Uh, yes. So that day he called him Yerubabel, saying, "Let Ball plead against him, because he has broken down his altar." Now all Midian and Amalek and all the people of the east were gathered together, and they passed over and encamped in the valley of Israel. Then the Ruach of Yahuwah came upon Gideon. And he blew the ram's horn. And the Abbey Zerites gathered behind him. And he sent messengers throughout all of Manasseh, who also gathered behind him. And he sent messengers to Asher and to Zebulun and to Naphtali. And they came up to meet him. And Gideon said to Elohim, If you are saving Yisro by my hand, as you have said, See, I am placing a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you are saving Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so. And he rose early in the next morning and pressed the fleece and wrung dew out of the fleece till a bowl to fill a bowl of with water. And Gideon said to Elohim, <clears throat> Do not be displeased with me, and let me speak only this time. Please, let me try only this time with the fleece. Please, let it be dry only on the fleece, and let there be dew on all the ground. There we go. And Elohim did so that night, and it was dry on the fleece only, but there was dew on all the ground. So there we go. A lot go. of waste of time. A lot of waste of time. Well, I mean, this is uh, this is some faith problems, right? These are. It's um, crazy to see like uh, uh, how how he was also like favored. How like y'all didn't just smoke him and find the next guy because he was just faithless. Who other who other people in scriptures have negotiated with y'all like this that have. Uh, well, you know, kind of things. I think David has. Uh, Abraham kind of tried for a lot, and the people of Sodom. Sodom, yeah, he definitely he didn't just try. Homeboy went, he went mad on trying to get it all the way down to like under five people, right, or something of the sort. Um, starting off at like what hundreds? Fifty, I think. Was it fifty or was it hundred? Uh, fifty. Fifty. Maybe they'll bring it down to ten. Fifty, forty, thirty, ten, five, and then you know, still we we didn't find it. Um, there's been a lot of people that negotiate with our Creator. And our creator is patient enough that he wants his will done and he does what he needs to do to get it done. And sometimes we all fall with lack of faith. Sometimes we fall to a, a certain way. Um, and, you know, there's no difference between these people back in these days and the people that are here today. It's the same thing. If you walk out your door, you will still see Christmas decorations. You will see the ball and you will see the Ashroth poles all over the place. You'll see them lined up from road to road. Pretty soon you'll be seeing them. Uh, they're going to toss their uh, phalluses of Nimrod out in the trash. And the trash guys are going to come and crush all the trees up and throw them away. Uh, it's just, it's the routine. It's worse in the same world where everybody is, has their own um, things they're worshiping. And it's not worshiping the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
So with that, everybody, we hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We hope that you guys are getting something out of these readings. We thank you very much for being part of our family. And we hope you have a good day. We're out. All right. Yeah, sure. Shalom.